Hello, and welcome to Oak Island Theories. In this video, we are going to explore the theory that the Money Pit contains the Ark of the Covenant, and that the men who built it were members of the greatest naval power of the ancient world. Let's take a look. The Phoenicians were an ancient Semitic people who emerged in around 1500 BC in what is now Lebanon. Following the late Bronze Age collapse of the 12th century BC, which saw the end of the powerful Egyptian and Hittite empires and the fall of the Mycenaean civilization of ancient Greece, the Phoenicians quickly filled the power vacuum, becoming the best shipbuilders, sailors, and traders in the Mediterranean. Throughout the Iron Age, the Phoenicians built a massive trade empire, which revolved around their mother city of Tyre, located in modern-day Lebanon. To support their trading activities, they established various colonies, city-states, and trading posts throughout the Mediterranean, from Egypt to Italy to Spain to North Africa. Phoenician merchants would depart from their home ports in ships laden with Lebanese cedar, glass, slaves, wine, and textiles dyed with Tyrian purple, a valuable purple dye secreted by a particular species of sea snail, and sail a circuitous route which spanned the Mediterranean, trading with various tribes and kingdoms as they went. Some historians maintain that the Phoenicians sailed beyond the Straits of Gibraltar into the Atlantic Ocean, whereupon they either turned south and followed the African coast to Senegal, where they traded with the local Wolof for gold, or sailed north along the Iberian coastline to Britain, where they traded with local Celts for tin, an invaluable metal in those days, which would be smelted with copper to make bronze. In addition to their incredible nautical achievements, the Phoenicians invented the world's first alphabet, a writing system in which characters represent sounds. Most of the world's alphabets, including Greek, Latin, Hebrew, and Arabic, and all their progeny, are derived from the ancient Phoenician alphabet. According to the Hebrew Bible, the Israelites, upon returning to the Holy Land in around 1000 BC, formed a staunch alliance with the neighboring Phoenicians. Hiram I, the king of the Phoenician mother city of Tyre, assisted the Hebrew king Solomon, the third king of Israel, in constructing his famous first temple of Jerusalem. In 539 BC, the Achaemenid Persian Empire, under King Cyrus the Great, conquered the Phoenician homeland. The Persians made the Phoenicians their vassals, and divided the conquered Syrian Lebanese territory into four vassal city-states, Tyre, Sidon, Arwad, and Byblos. In 332 BC, the Macedonian Greek conqueror Alexander the Great seized Tyre after a bloody siege. Alexander's brutal treatment of the Tyrian citizens prompted Sidon, Arwad, and Byblos to surrender to the warlord peacefully. Although Phoenician culture gradually disappeared from the motherland under Macedonian and later Ptolemaic Greek-Egyptian rule, it lived on in Carthage, the Phoenicians' most important colony, located in what is now Tunisia, North Africa. After fighting three wars with the burgeoning Roman Republic, the second of which was characterized by the brilliant Carthaginian general Hannibal Barca's iconic march through the Alps, Carthage was conquered in 146 BC by the Roman commander Scipio Africanus Aemilianus, and Punic-slash-Phoenician culture was wiped out. Proponents of the Phoenician theory believe that the Phoenicians, who were longtime allies of the Israelites, helped their Jewish friends smuggle their sacred treasures, including the Ark of the Covenant, out of the Mediterranean and across the Atlantic to the far side of the world, following the 587 BC siege and subsequent fall of Jerusalem, carried out by the Neo-Babylonian Empire under Nebuchadnezzar II. Specifically, Phoenician theory proponents believe that these sacred treasures were spirited away from the Holy Land between 582 and 596 BC, when a huge number of Israelites were exiled by the Babylonian king. There are a few pieces of evidence to support the Phoenician theory. In Season 5, Episode 12 of The Curse of Oak Island, bookbinder Joe Landry of the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design examined a piece of purple wood discovered in Borehole H8, which he determined likely constituted the spine of a book. Although he opined that the wood's purple color was attributable to grape juice used to stain the leather to which the spine must have been attached, he also likened the wood's rich color to Tyrian purple a purple dye which constituted one of the major exports of the ancient Phoenicians. In Season 5, Episode 10, Gary Drayton and Rick Lagina discovered a small lead cross on Smith's Cove, with a square hole punched through its top. Although many members of Oak Island Tours, Inc. attempted to connect this artifact with the Knights Templar theory, New York-based researcher Zena Halpern, in Season 5, Episode 15, opined that the cross was a representation of the Carthaginian goddess Tanit. 
If true, this would bolster the Phoenician theory, as Carthage was a Phoenician colony. As mentioned, most modern-day historians believe that the ancient city of Carthage, located on the coast of northern Tunisia, was established sometime in the 9th century BC. Initially, the city was founded as a colony of Phoenicia. Gradually, as Phoenicia began to lose its grip on the Mediterranean, Carthage began to eclipse its Middle Eastern progenitor. By the 7th century BC, Carthage was one of the wealthiest and most powerful cities in the Mediterranean, remaining so until 146 BC when it fell to Rome. As Carthage grew, it began to develop its own distinctive Punic culture. The word Punic is synonymous with Carthaginian. Most notably, the citizens of Carthage adopted two chief deities for their city, the god Baal Haman and his wife, the goddess Tanit. Although there is some controversy regarding her origin, most historians agree that Tanit is not exclusively a Punic goddess. She was initially worshipped in the Phoenician homeland, most often in connection with the Phoenician's own mother goddess, Astarte, the patron of fertility and war. By the time the citizens of Carthage adopted her as one of their city's two chief deities, Tanit had taken on many of Astarte's characteristics. In time, the two goddesses were indistinguishable from each other. Tanit eventually evolved to become everything for the Carthaginians that Astarte was for the Phoenicians. However, she retained one particular characteristic with which Astarte was never attributed. She was associated with child mortality, either as a protective guardian of the souls of dead children or as an idol to which children were sacrificed. The symbol which the people of Carthage used to represent Tanit consisted of an isosceles triangle topped by a horizontal arm, which was sometimes crooked upward at the elbow, which in turn was topped with a circle. Oftentimes, the circle was crowned with a downward-facing crescent. In some early depictions of the symbol, Tanit's body was a trapezoid instead of a triangle. Despite the assertion made by Xena Halpern in Season 5, Episode 13, however, it was never, to the best of this author's knowledge, a vertical line. Incidentally, there are two symbols which really do correspond with what Halpern contends is an early version of the sign of Tanit, namely the Ankh, an Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol for life, and an early form of the Coptic cross. Although the potential connection between the lead cross found at Smith's Cove and the goddess Tanit is unlikely, it is consistent with the theory held by French historian J.H.P. that many of the petroglyphs carved by the indigenous Mi'kmaq people of Nova Scotia show signs of Punic slash Phoenician influence, suggesting that the Phoenicians or the Carthaginians made voyages across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World. In various websites, podcasts, and YouTube videos, J.H.P. attempts to perpetuate the theory, long held by a number of Oak Island researchers, that Oak Island's treasure consists of precious artifacts from the Temple of Solomon, traditionally believed to have been looted by the armies of Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar in 587 BC. J.H.P. argues that these treasures were smuggled out of Jerusalem and shipped to the New World by the Kingdom of Israel's ancient allies, the Phoenicians. In an effort to prove his theory, J.H.P. argues that Oak Island's 90-foot stone and the Jowdry's Cove H.O. stone discovered by Gilbert Hedden in 1936 are evidence of a Phoenician presence on Oak Island. Specifically, he claims that these Oak Island stones are inscribed with an ancient script, quote, totally unknown and related to Canada, unquote, and thought to be extinct. J.H.P. declares that the script, like ancient Greek, is bostrophedonic, meaning that it is meant to be read from top to bottom, with each line alternating from left to right and right to left, as if the reader were following the script with his eyes in the same manner in which a farmer would plow a field with an ox team. In a YouTube video, J.H.P. claims that the script is Libico Berber, an ancient North African writing system believed by some to have been used by a number of the Sea Peoples, a confederation of sea-going raiders which attacked the New Kingdom of Egypt in the 10th century BC whose invasions were partly responsible for the late Bronze Age collapse, which, according to some linguists, evolved into the Tifana alphabet of present-day Morocco and Algeria about 2,000 years ago. Both Libico-Berber script and the Tifana alphabet are writing systems related to the Phoenician language and the Phoenicio-Punic language of ancient Carthage. J.H.P. also draws parallels between a symbol on one of the Mi'kmaq Bedford Baron's petroglyphs, the other of which was showcased in Season 2, Episode 2 of The Curse of Oak Island, and a weather-worn marking on the Jowdry Cove's H.O. stone. In a YouTube video, J.H.P. declares that the smoking gun connecting Oak Island with the Phoenicians is the similarity between some of the Mi'kmaq petroglyphs around Kejim Kujik Lake, Nova Scotia, and a painting which adorns the tomb of ancient Egyptian pharaoh Seti I. 
Specifically, JHP argues that Mi'kmaq rock carvings depicting men wearing triangular robes and headdresses bear close resemblance to a painted depiction of an ancient Libyan, i.e. Proto-Phoenician, man which adorns a wall in ancient Egyptian pharaoh Seti I's tomb. In other words, JHP believes that the Mi'kmaq Kejimkujik Lake petroglyphs depict an ancient Phoenician man. JHP goes on to describe how the eight-pointed star, one of the Mi'kmaq petroglyphs in the Nova Scotian's Bedford Barrens, is also a symbol once used to denote the ancient Mesopotamian goddesses Ishtar and Inanna, and later the Phoenician-slash-Canaanite goddess Astarte. He further implies that the ancient Mesopotamian-slash-Levantine eight-pointed star evolved into the hexagramic Star of David, an ancient symbol of Judaism which he refers to as the Seal of Solomon. In this way, he suggests some sort of connection between King Solomon, whom some believed used the Star of David as a signet, and the Bedford Baron's petroglyphs. In another YouTube video, JHP attempts to establish another connection between Oak Island and ancient Phoenicia by arguing that the tall, peculiar-looking, umbrella-canopied oak trees for which Oak Island was named, which can be seen in some old photographs of the island, are not northern red oaks as commonly believed, but rather a species of oak tree endemic to North Africa. JHP neglects to disclose which particular oak species he believes them to be. He goes on to speculate that these oak trees were first planted on Oak Island by ancient Phoenician mariners for the purpose of serving as navigational markers, which, due to the tree's considerable height, would in theory be visible many miles away. What are your thoughts on the Phoenician theory of Oak Island? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support this channel, please check out the Oak Island Encyclopedia by clicking the link in the description.